Greetings once again, pirates on the high seas. Dudes this then back again with One Piece, where we had the Gorosei, the five elders, discussing the events in Wano, the awakening of Nika, and the fact that Wano remained closed with its border. And just as the elders were ready to order CP0 to go in and do some CP0 stuff, they were contacted by none other than Admiral Ryukyu, who is making his way to Wano to stir up some trouble. Meanwhile, Luffy and Zoro have finally awakened from their injury. And while well, of course they're hungry and in Zoro's case thirsty, as well as Yamato who had been on a fast as a tradition of prayer hoping for their safe awakening. They're told don't eat too much, wash up and get ready cause there's gonna be another festival celebrating the safety of Wano. With most of the people only knowing that Luffy and his crew pretty much had already set sail. So they won't know that they are partying with the heroes of Wano. How short-lived will their celebration be? Join me as I find out, won't you? A celebration banquet and the new emperors of the sea. Yes, give me the lore. Oh, opening with the Gorosei again. What is this picture? What's going on? <laughs> Gee, we told you to remove the D too. No, we weren't told about it. We got the pictures from Guernica, some of the CP0. Reprint them immediately. Okay, we can't put this crap out into the world, but we can't contact the printing company. <laughs> it's flying hot off the presses. They're so useless. Cease the distribution somehow. Nope, it's already out there. It's basically payback for sending someone to try to bribe him. Big News Morgan doesn't stop the big news. He looks so mysterious here. Deliver, deliver. Deliver every single copy of them, my employees. Cyberpool infiltrated line of Wano and no one's heard from them since. In their last transmission, they said it's Big Mom's ship and won't let them manipulate information. The truth is the most interesting thing when the times are changing like now. I love how everything is happening in real time. <laughs> most exciting time to read the news. What is this? It's an extra issue. Something happened. Hey, look at this. Emperor of the Sea. Man, they got some good pictures. Jeez. Emperor of the Sea, Kaido, and Big Mom defeated. Oh, they got a picture of Salvo in the back. Do you see it? It's a lot more apparent than it was in the uh, manga. It didn't take long before such massive news spread across the world. The three pirate captains who took down two emperors who reigned over the sea for decades. The government has placed an ex exorbitant bounty of three billion berry on each of them. I swear this is totally in Bartolo Mio's place because it's so decorative and stuff like that. Then again, who wouldn't have pictures of Law and Kid? Never mind. Three billion berry. Boss. Wow, Captain. Hey, let me see it closely. Uh, you actually get to see, like, the done-up versions of some of Kid's crew. And some of the guys who were, like, filler add-ons are still there too, oddly enough. Read here. No way. Unbelievable. Oh, hey, boss. What's wrong, Kid? Where you, did he go looking upset? Probably the flower capital. You have a new emperor of the sea, huh? No wonder they picked that one. Hey guys, I heard there's a banquet in the capital today. Let's go. Yeah, party! Yeah, just in time, we gotta celebrate. Let's get crazy. Hey, festival, festival! You're getting excited. Love them striking a pose. I love that his crew is so much more flamboyant than he is. There's gonna be trouble again. Oh, cloud, add cloud ear mushroom. And chrysanthemum leaves in the soup. A plate of guest of tofu. A bowl of flower shaped lotus root. A small bowl of cucumber salad. We must not let anything happen to our valued guests. So we grab everything once, heat it up, and reshape it. Then test it for poison three times. Now I use all my skills today. Please enjoy our traditional quiz that lives up to the shogun's name. <laughs> only Jinbei showed up. He's the only one really for pageantry, let's be honest. Oh, what? Well, well I. They all couldn't wait two hours for the dishes to be ready. Yeah, I couldn't wait two hours either. <laughs> But it looks so delicious. I appreciate your consideration. Aw, it's boisterous out there. Festival, festival! Let's have a lot of fun. Yeah! Of course, overgrown children. Chocolate bananas, fried noodles, grilled octopus balls and grilled squid, cotton candy too. This is the best! Yeah, and Yamato's never really gotten to enjoy something like this. Everything is free today. Free! I've never been to a festival. It's fun. There are so many delicious things, so it's hard to decide what to eat next. Hey guys, what are those? Oh, candy apples. They're called candy apples. They look like a jewel. Beautiful. 
Yeah, the sweet as is good. And the other fruit wouldn't taste this good. What are we waiting for? Oh, <laughs> just eat it whole. So good. Hey, since you guys know so much, tell me if there are any non-fruit stalls too. Okay, count on me. When you're full, you gotta go. Ah, oh, the shooting gallery. Gum gum target shooting. <laughs> yes, it's a knockdown. That's not how that works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're funny. You can't use your hand. Oh man, can I try again? What? Ah, uh, goldfish scooping. It broke. You wanna try again? Okay, it's my turn. Use brain point. Yeah! See, this is what I was hoping for. We actually get to see them enjoying themselves. Oh, that was great. You're good, Chopper. Your compliments don't make me happy, you fools. <laughs> he looks really happy. Yeah, Brooke! Yeah, everyone. Are you having a good time? <laughs> you probably think it's a costume. Yeah, all right, Brooke, do it! What I'm gonna play for you is a hit number that will light up the land of Wano. I'm gonna give you the finest soul music with the princess you love. Yes, the song that Brother Odin loved, Moon Princess. <laughs> princess Yuri, the rock version. Ah, oh, that's right, lore. Damn, I was actually hoping to hear that. What? Gotta get in that plot. Because poneglyphs are afoot. Oh, Kokeshi dolls. What are these? Are you interested in those, Nika Robin? Thank you. How do you know my name? They're my collection. What? Aren't they cute? Beautiful girl Kokeshi doll. Meh. <laughs> like, eh. Not creepy enough for my liking. No way. This, this can't be happening. My Kokeshi doll collection was rejected. <laughs> I'm taking the trouble to collect them. <laughs> You're being overdramatic. You're a funny Tango. By the way, how come your collection is here? Why indeed. You bruised my, <laughs> you brushed my joke aside. This is my secret hobby room where, and where I was confined for years. Confined? I guess you're more than just a swordsmith. It's just a hobby. Seems like I have a good aptitude for it. Oh, come on. Festivals and politics are exhausting. Who are you really? Me? <laughs> Yeah. My name is Kozuki Sukiyak. I am Kozuki Odin's father. So many people guessed that. Specifically because of the anime, too. So many people guessed it. Because he had the same voice actor. So many people were just like, I Is Tegoyama just Sukiyaki in disguise? And, it, like, at one point there was even a data book that was released that gave two different ages for Tegoyama and Sukiyaki. So we're just like, okay, that's weird. But then someone went back and corrected it, making them the same age, and then it's just like, okay, they're definitely the same person. Which wasn't a bad thing. You know, knowing a theory or a plot point feeling a little obvious isn't bad, because that way it's not out of left field when you guess it. It's like, if you look close enough, the clues are there. But... If you're kind of blindsided by it, again, the clues are there. Because we were told of Sukiyaki's death, but to not even have a funeral procession or anything that really points out how he died or whatever like that. And you might think, why didn't they just off him? Because they wanted to find shit. It's the same reason why Cobra was kept alive by Crocodile. He knows secrets of the country. What a surprise. Does Momo know? No, he doesn't. I'm uh, not gonna tell him. But the retainers may have noticed. I'm the one who let Orochi take over this land of Wano. I'm too ashamed to tell anyone that I'm alive. When I got out of this room barely with my life, Odin had ar was already dead and the land of Wano was completely changed. I thought about killing myself by cutting my stomach on the spot, but I had no choice but to hide. Until the coming day, for the sake of my remaining mission. Now, after what happened, I have to thank you all for everything. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear that. Yeah? Hey, Tenga, I want to talk to you about something. I'm aware that each country has it. An ancient weapon. Pluton. How do you know that? It's written on the poneglyph of the Kingdom of Alabaster. Yes. Finally, it comes full circle. That poneglyph she read all that time ago. It gets me too, because around here is when I... Around when I kind of caught up to certain things with One Piece. Well, this is around the time when I started actually reading and watching One Piece, was when they were at Alabasta. And when I caught up, they were in this lobby. I didn't expect you to know that much. Yes, it's here. So forthcoming. And, once again, another interesting situation, and we cut away from it. As you do. From a salvation labor camp, Udon. What was that? Yep. Someone's stirring up trouble. Justice. Death River Double Suicide. Which is in reference to a comedy of a Oiran, or Lady of the Night as it were, who had run out of money and uh, was looking to kind of be done with all her living, but she didn't want to go alone. Found this fool of a man who she convinced to come with her and do the deed. He 
wasn't really aware of what she was trying to do. She pushed him to his what seemed to be his death off of a bridge and just before she went someone came up and told her that she had come into a lot of money through one reason or another and she's just like oh i've got so much to live for and went about her business only for the guy who hit the bottom to have not it wasn't really that far down so he survived and just went about his day so I, I'm still wondering what it means for him to have that kanji there. Like, what does it mean? Does it mean he's a fool for love? Or that his end will come at the hands of someone who will fool him into something he normally wouldn't do? Gee, there are only scruffy men here. Oh, King, are you a Navy soldier? Oh, whoa. You're pretty beat up. You must be Kaido's man. Are you gonna welcome me? Then bring me some boo. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> yep, still ready to fight. Yeah, you guys are beat up. He's not going down that easily. How could you be so relaxed, you bastard? Cut it out. What can you do with your mortally injured body? Shut up. This isn't a matter of pride, you annoying navy shit. I really don't have time to fool around here. But if you stand in my way, I'll have to remove you by force. Ah, oh, things are about to go down. I'm actually glad we get to see this, honestly. Another moment that really makes the anime worth watching. Ooh, that music. Oh, was that for Kid? Nice! I love the rock and eye catch. Be careful. He's not an easy opponent to beat if you're injured. Even so, let us fight. Yeah, Babanuki. We don't want to give it the too trouble. That's right. Let's kick his ass. There it comes. Ooh, oh god. It looks even more brutal than I thought it would. Oh, no way. Just two more. Nope. Oh, he's so nimble. Look at him go. There I guess the ropes. Oh, dang. Man, even injured. Oh, never mind. He was doing pretty good, all things considered. Queen, just one more. Oof, oof. What's wrong? I think your injured body is reaching its limit. Ugh. Of course, King would be the last one standing. There's no way that Krabby Punch could get me. Yeah, he doesn't even have a sword, too. And one of his wings is badly injured. Ugh. Yep. Ugh. No, I'm a dare not be skinny kind of guy. I told you to cut it out. If I get defeated by mo mere top officers, I would be disgraced. The Navy doesn't have the manpower to clean up the mess now. Just as I predicted. You guys did well. Oof. Training their life force. The booze isn't so good. You should have aged it more. Better, 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 better. Gotcha. Hello, this is. Hey, it's me. Send one warship to the land of Wano. Oh, what? Oh, Ryukugu. Don't tell Sakazuki. Bye. Gotcha. I really like it. His extreme style. Yeah. I, I was in such denial over his personality too, because because he was friends with Fujitora, I thought maybe he was going to be cool, but nah, he admires Akainu and that doesn't jive with me, that extreme sense of justice, I want to win praise from him, like, good job, oh god, <laughs> god, his face, ugh, put back on the sunglasses dude, I do like his abilities though, oh, Luffy, who's that, really, alright now, we started it, Ninja Pirate Minks and Samurai, the King's Retainers, Yakuza in the Land of Wano, well done fighting guys, alright young man, give a toast, yo banquet leader, yeah leave it to me, <laughs> Momo, Luffy, don't tell the Land of Wano about me, why not, it'll make me a hero, what's wrong with that, it's true you defeated Kaido, you idiot, Everyone has been waiting for you, Momo. You're gonna make this country where people can eat and drink as much as they want every day. And they don't need to be afraid of guys like Kaido where every day is fun, right? You should become a respectable shogun and make sure everyone's dreams come true. There's no need to mention me. You're gonna change this country. I'm not gonna lie, I half thought he was gonna do the whole because heroes share their food comment, but it's like, no. Because this is your time. You're what people need to have been waiting for. You're what people need to acknowledge as the coming of a better tomorrow. The Ninja Pirate Minx Samurai Alliance one. I'm so surprised he remembers that name. Luffy so often doesn't remember so many things, and yet that mouthful of a name he remembers to the letter. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> And yet, someone who has a short name like Ulti, he'll remember as Headbutt. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Luffy, gee, you're such a wonderful guy. Hey, what are you doing? My woos are gonna help. Don't mess it up, Momo. Got it. Count on me. Luffy then proceeded to pass the fuck out. Gee, you're such an amazing guy. Oh, get out of my way. Straw hat. I love the way he's running. If I could get rid of you here. 
Shaggy, set them off. Alright, to tomorrow's food. <laughs> Instantly defeated. What are you doing? There you go. Come by. <laughs> glug, 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 glug. Let's get loud. Yeah. When it's time to party, we will always party hard. Party hard, party hard, party hard, party hard. This makes me want to drink more and more. Carrot. Listen, guys, we're going to drink all night today. I love that even the kid pirates are just off to the side celebrating. It's just like, eh, hey, can do whatever he wants. Free food, man. Free food, free booze. Kid. You have fun being angry. We're gonna be over here partying. This is the happiest I've ever seen heat and wire. God, that does look beautiful. Pirates are such wild people. Gee, I've never even heard of a massive banquet like this, but I never thought I'd see such a peaceful moment in my lifetime. Aw, here I go to... Boy, I hate it. As you get older, you're moved to tears easily. Ah, I personally have always been a crybaby, if I'm being honest. I'm man enough to admit, I've always cried at the drop of a hat. Even this moment here is kind of getting me a little emotional. And Toko hanging out with Raizo and Kiku. Hey, can we see these beautiful fireworks next year and the year after? Yes, of course. Well, thanks to everyone for saving the present moment and the future. God, the imagery here is so beautiful. So from now on, no matter how many seasons pass, and look, you can do this one all the time. The little sparklers, awesome. Ugh. Like, this is genuinely getting me emotional. See, this is why I love the anime. Despite its faults, just the sheer emotion. Luffy, everyone, thank you. I will not forget this banquet. Oh yeah, and Kinemon with his wife. <laughs> Some people were just like, didn't she die? And she's like, listen man, no. <laughs> just, just no. A little worse for wear to a certain degree, but... She's gonna be alright. Never ever. Never ever. I, l I love that even Tama and the freaking headliners are still like together. Still hanging around. Never ever. Forever. Ah, so good. Oh, hey. Don't get me involved. Oh, come on. It's a banquet. And I love how he's just crouching on that banister with Luffy. Luffy, like, it's easy to see Luffy crouching on a precarious place, and it's just like, that's just Luffy. But Kid also doing it with all that bulk, and the coat, and the metal arm, it's, it's so just hilarious to see. <laughs> I don't know why I find it so funny. I don't know what's happening overseas, but look at this. I came to get rid of you. There he comes. What? That's right. Eustace Kid came to Luffy looking upset. For a very clear reason. It's a sign of the end of the old regime. And the beginning of a new era. Yes, thank you, announcer man. Oh my god. No, I have to go back. <laughs> I have to go back. I just love the way they're just chilling out. Like, they're about to drop the baddest album ever. It's just hilarious to me because we see Moji and Kabaji in less and less detail with every appearance. They're always just hazily in the background. Despite being like the ori original people on Buggy's crew, but now Alvida and Mr. 3, the newer members, are more at the forefront. <laughs> it still gets me. Buggy the genius jester. Yep. Blackbeard teach. Yep, red-haired Shank. God, I love those fast clips of their crew. Yep, you can see all of Buggy's crew. Whoa, was Vasco shot always that tall? Jesus Christ, look at Vasco shot. He's huge. He's almost twice the size of Shiryu. Holy crap. Huh, well, all right then. And just in some random industrial zone, the red-haired pirates. And Straw Hat Luffy. These are the new four new emperors, the four emperors of the sea. Oh, what a great shot. Oh, everywhere he goes, a garden grows. The festival music sounds joyful, but the navy is in the mood for that, brats. The banquet is over. Jeez, I'm gonna bleed all of you dry. Would not be the first time Luffy's been pierced. Kinky, the outside world is a mess. I'm gonna take your head. So just wait for me there. Oh boy. Who knew flower power could be so dangerous? It's so wild. A man who we just saw easily take down King and Queen. Though, again, injured. is coming for Luffy's head. And the thing is, if 
With King and Queen being as injured as they were, you can only imagine how injured Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and the rest are. So will he have an easier time taking them on? That's the question. Again, I love this ending, because it's literally what's just literally happening after the banquet. Also something that most people, I don't know if they noticed or not, they straight up show Sukiyaki's face here, without the Tangu mask or anything. I mean, most people knew that the mask was fake and probably came off, but even still, just anime having light spoilers and all that. So next episode is gonna be great. They're sticking pretty hard to the canon right now. Anything that's included just, again, highlight stuff, cause like the little montage of certain scenes in Wano and all that. Oh god, that kind of stuff. Just giving a moment to soak it all in just really helped me appreciate a lot of things. I know that some people get all bent out of shape about the fact that Luffy, Law, and Kid all have the same bounty. But from a certain perspective, it looks like this. It was a 3v2. They're also trying to downplay how much of an involvement Luffy had. Because if it was purely Luffy took down Kaido, that'd be another story. But it's not. Luffy, Law, and Kid took down Kaido and Big Mom. So it comes out looking like a joint effort. Nobody really knows that the person spearheading a lot of this was, to a certain degree, Luffy. And a lot of it did revolve around the actions of Luffy, too. It's kind of the inverse of ha what happened with Beige, where the whole incident with Big Mom came out looking like it was purely Luffy. Who did everything despite the fact that Beige set up the plan. Beige was the one who was pretty much spearheading a lot of what happened in the effort to kill Big Mom. They weren't even... Luffy and the others weren't even there to take down Big Mom, honestly. But at the same time, you have to elevate the fact that another Emperor of the Big Sea of the Sea fell to Law and Kid. Like, so by all technical means, Long Kid should be sharing a 3 billion bounty in total, more or less, but eh, neither here nor marine shenanigans at all. I'm also bummed that we didn't get to hear the song of Brook and Hiori. I damn well better hear that next episode, or anime, you're doing a dis us a disservice. You can't tease me a Brook and Hiori co-production and not do it. I better hear some kind of CD somewhere down the line. But hey, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What did you think about actually getting to see King and Queen throw down? Because the manga did not show that. We only saw the aftermath. And I like the fact that despite their injuries, they were still at least ready to throw down to some degree. And what do you think about Sukiyaki still being alive? I mean, going into hiding while Odin and, I mean, while Orochi and Kaido were in power was pretty much all the rage for most people, so I can't really blame Sukiyaki for what he decided to do. Especially since the idea is keeping the secrets of Wano out of enemy hands which Robin is about to find out. So again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the ride. And until next time, I've been Juice Disney. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you later. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.